Now we're live on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 144. This is Joy News Prime with me, Samuel Kojo Brace. Our lead stories, this are gunfire in the street of Asaman Tamfo in the eastern region. The incident is said to have occurred between some persons believed to be illegal miners and a community anti galamsey task force. Some arrests have been made. Uh, we'll bring you details of that also in this bulletin. Minority blow alarm on alleged $100 million missing from Ghana's petroleum funds as they demand that the finance ministry repatriate funds they say have been illegally transferred back into the petroleum holding fund. Two bodies cannot even explain here where the lodgements have been made and into which accounts the lodgements have been made. Then we can conclude that indeed those monies cannot be accounted for. We have details as Piak Ford's government for registering a company offshore to be holding petroleum funds. We are saying that these people should come and register any money they generate because it's a petroleum revenue. It should pass through by, that's, uh, the holding fund, petroleum holding fund. Before, if they want the money back, it should be allocated from petroleum holding fund. Also in this bulletin, it is safe to drink water directly from your taps. Ghana Water Company Limited assures consumers the effect of Galamse is limited to cost and that's what affect quality of water. I'm saying it's affecting our water bodies uh, and affecting GWCL in terms of cost of production. We want to assure the general public that water that flows into our taps meets the best of standard and they can consume it directly from the tap. At a stroke of midnight, your mobile number may be disconnected. That is if you haven't completed your same re-registration process. A minority in Ghana's parliament is alleging that $100 million of petroleum funds is missing from state coffers. According to the minority spokesperson on mines and energy, John Jinapo, checks conducted by the public interest and accountability committee, PIAC, could not reveal where the money accrued from Ghana's petroleum resources had been launched. The Petroleum Revenue Management Act, Act 815, stipulates that when these oil or barrels of oil are sold, the preceding month, by the 15th of that month, all revenues accruing from our petroleum resources to be deposited or lodged into the petroleum holding fund. The petroleum holding fund is the receptacle for all revenues accruing from our oil resource, be it sale of oil, surface rental, royalties, or corporate. And so it's clear that is the law. If you don't put it there and you take it any other place, you are violating the law. But even more importantly, in the PIAC report, PIAC wrote to the minister to ascertain and determine where those lodgements were made. The minister responded by saying they couldn't provide those answers. And the PIAC should rather go to GRA. PIAC contacted GRA, wrote to them, and GRA responded that they couldn't provide the answers. That is where the problem is. These two bodies cannot even explain PIAC where the lodgements have been made and into which accounts the lodgements have been made. Then we can conclude that indeed those monies cannot be accounted for. And if something cannot be accounted for, it is missing until found. Now the minority says they will use every parliamentary tool available to dig into the whereabouts of this $100 million they claim is missing from government coffers. John Janapo again. ...is trying to use a special purpose vehicle known as Jubilee Oil Holdings Limited to borrow $500 million to spend today against our oil receivable, which is also against Act 919. It's against the Petroleum Exploration and Production Act. That is what they are trying to do. They want to borrow money today against future receivables, and they want to size the parliament. So they are trying to use unconventional and unorthodox means to establish this Jubilee Oil Holdings Limited and then use that as a conduit to borrow this money against the nation's oil resources. Our laws are clear that our national oil company is a GNPC. And so if we increase our stake, be it carried or participating interest in the oil field, what you have to do is to transfer those shares to GNPC directly to away from this Jubilee Oil Holdings Limited. We also encourage you, the media, civil society, and all Ghanaians to get involved. It's not just the job of the minority. In Parliament, we operate with laws. One of them is censure. If the majority side decides that irrespective of this abuse and blatant disregard for the law, they still want to stand with the minister, let the nation judge us and let posterity judge us. But we can only apply the law. We can only use parliamentary processes, legitimate processes to ensure that we seek redress. And that's exactly what we are doing. But all cards are on the table. Every parliamentary tool, we shall use that tool. 
Meanwhile, the Public Interest and Accountability Committee, PIAC, says government has set up an offshore company, Jubilee Oil Holding Limited, outside Ghana, and a holding petroleum funds, which they say must be registered in Ghana according to law. The UHL uh, is a foreign company. It's a foreign company, but subsidiary to GMPC. Once a subsidiary to GMPC, they should be registered in Ghana, because GMPC is wholly owned by Ghanaians. And you cannot say that your 100% subsidiary is a foreign. That it's not done. So we are saying that these people should come and register. Any money they generate, because it's a petroleum revenue, it should pass through uh, that's uh, the holding fund, petroleum holding fund, before if they want the money back, it should be allocated from petroleum holding fund. That is our uh, issue. So the money should come and be put into the petroleum fund because the subsidiary, 100% subsidiary of GMPC, and GMPC is 100% owned by Ghanaians. But the government says there is no basis to that allegation being leveled against it. Lawyer Andre Japamesa is a deputy minister of energy and joins us live through phone with some details. Uh, thank you so much for joining us here. Why is government saying there's no basis? Where is the money? For the opportunity, and uh, let me say good evening to your cherished viewers and listeners. Uh, clearly, the headline that some hundred million dollars is missing, is not borne out by the statement that is coming from the PIAC itself, for the interview that you just played, and also from the statement or the interview that the minority spokesperson on energy indicated. You see, there, there's a clear distinction between what has taken place and what you think ought to take place. If the suggestion is that what governments have done is improper and that a certain treatment ought to be attributed to the Jubilee Holdings transaction, that's completely distinct and separate from suggesting that some money is missing. Because indeed and in fact, Jubilee Holdings okay, came about because at the time that Anadaku to transfer its interest to Palo Oil, a cost. GMPC, through the Ministry of Energy and the Ministry of Finance, indicated the desire to participate in that acquisition because there was a clear intent that we needed to move GMPC from merely being a holding company into operatorship. So if you recall, that process had started with the indication of taking some stake in the acre field, okay, or increasing GMPC stake in the acre field. So when this opportunity came about, it was important for government to exercise its right to participate. However, because of the financing and the timing of the transaction, Anadako set up to be holding Company Limited in the Cayman Islands to, as it were, carve that share of 7% out of the transaction that they were doing with Cosmos. Just so that when they conclude discussions with GMPC, then GMPC can take that interest. So the suggestion that government of Ghana set up a vehicle outside Ghana in itself, is inaccurate. Because at the time that the government of Ghana was making the acquisition of GOHL, that company had already been incorporated by Anadako. But really, uh, it, 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 it's really of no consequence, right? Because as far as we are concerned, government of Ghana, through GMPC, then acquired, with support from the Ministry of Finance, the Jubilee Holdings Limited, and that is a wholly owned subsidiary of GMPC that has been registered as an external company here in Ghana. You can say that that process ought to proceed to a full transfer to GMPC, as opposed to suggesting that by reason only of the fact that that company 
have been set up or that GMPC acquired that share of GOHL in the Cayman Islands. That money is missing. When we all know that that money is in fact not missing, it can only amount to disingenuity without due respect. Is that the money that uh, Anadako capitalized the business with? Or it's a money that we, as a country, had to, you know, get $100 million and capitalize okay, the company so, with? Okay, so the, the $100 million mm -hmm. is the lifting that Jubilee Holdings, by reason of its 7%, have lifted oil from the field. Because based on your share mm -hmm. in the Jubilee field, Whatever lifting at any particular time, because the oil comes in on a daily basis. It's stored in the FPSO. And at every point in time, when there's an offtake, then a vessel comes and lifts the oil and takes it to the market. Okay. Jubilee Holdings have lifted oil as a company or a subsidiary of GMP up to 153 million or so. So the suggestion is that because Ghibli Holdings have lifted that volume of oil, which is GMPC's oil that it has lifted through JOHL, its subsidiary, that money is missing. I'm saying that it can only be fed up from the truth that that money is missing because if you listen to Piat, if you listen to John, my good friend, Jenna Paul, nobody has suggested that the money is missing. They are saying that JOHL should not be the proper party to hold that money on behalf of GMPC. But if you, if you, if you listen to Piat, Piat's argument is that they have not been able to get government to explain to them where that money is. And, and that's a problem, isn't it? But, but, but if GMPC which is mandated by law to set up subsidiary companies. Indeed, GMPC owns ex loco, GMPC ex loco, 100%. That is the vehicle that they were using to do the Anadako transaction. And it's my understanding that the intention is to transfer the shares in JOHL to ex loco to further the intent of making ex loco an, uh, an operating company. Really, where's the issue? Because Dan, why wasn't you it done directly by allowing no, 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 S no, no. Can, can be, to hold, to hold respect, that? Respect, respect. You can only raise an issue if GMPC hasn't got the power to incorporate subsidiary companies. And government and GMPC have then proceeded in breach of the law to set up a subsidiary company. But if the argument is that GMPC has the right and the power to set up subsidiary companies, and GMPC has proceeded to do so, to acquire the JOHL as a subsidiary of GMPC, how can anybody suggest that the money is missing? The other argument you is that the law, the law that says that the company must be registered in Ghana, but this is not but, so. But the company is registered in Ghana as an external company. So really, unless of course we want to throw away the principles of our mm. company law or company act, it's important. Okay. Okay. I I I I I love for people to raise issues, but if you don't offer opportunity for people to then provide you with the details, and you quickly jump out there and create a certain impression that some hundred million dollars. Mm. All right. How can you draw that conclusion when the well, facts on the ground? Lawyer, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful that you could find time tonight to explain issues to us. That's uh, the Deputy Minister of Energy, Lawyer Andrew Ejapa Now, the police have arrested 16 persons in connection with a shooting incident at Asaman Tamfo in the eastern region. The incident occurred between some persons believed to be legal miners and a community, a community anti galamsey task force on Thursday. Now, police have retrieved one pump action gun, two excavators, two water pumps, and a battery. 
Efforts are underway to arrest the remaining suspect and retrieve other weapons in their possession. The police have also seen a viral video on the incident, which has been reviewed as part of the investigation. Join us as Eastern Regional Correspondent Maxwell Kudeko has more in this report. So the environmental task force went in with the Chebi Divisional Police Command with their men to Asaman Tanfoy. But before they got to the mining side, they are told that um, the miners have had information that the police and the task force were coming. So they managed to take a vital part of one of the excavators and abscond them. But unfortunately, they left one. So the task force was able to dismantle one of the excavators and then put it on a loader. They effected arrest of about 24 people. So while they were leaving the mining site to the Asaman Tanfoy town, the miner had gone to mobilize men and then they met them by the, by the roadside and insisted that they take the excavator back to site. Other than that, there will be bloodshed. So we are told the police commander together with the chief wanted to calm them down. And then they told them that if they really have documents to, to support that they are legally mining in the area. We are told that they were, they were even washing closer to a, a, a river around Asama Tanfoy. They were causing devastation to the river and the environment. So they insisted that if they have any document to prove that indeed they are mining legally, they should submit, they should come to the Chief Divisional Police Command and they show proof of documentation. But the gentleman declined. So while the conversation was going back and forth, the guy has mobilized some tax within the enclave. So they started petting stone at them. And then the, the leader of the tax force, that is Apejahene, Osa, Osa Berima Okojiaman Apejafuri, we are told got hit by one of the stone. So the men also opened fire at them. And then uh, finally, they were able to clear the road and then left the scene with the 24 people arrested. But the police is, is, is quite tight with information, but I can reliably inform, uh, um, uh, inform our listeners that there's uh, currently a crunch meeting going on at the uh, Eastern Regional Police Command. So that's Maxwell Kudako with latest on that development. The Central Command of the Ghana Armed Forces has revealed a strong communication network di divulging information on plant soups on illegal miners, targeted perpetrators of the illegality, therefore managed to leave the operational areas before the arrival of the military task force. Commanding Officer Brigadier General Joseph Afo explains the information of recent operations of Monday dawn had gotten to the illegal miners hours ahead of the team. Daniel Ojima has more in this report. The two separate operations of the military led to seizure of 11 excavators at the Amansia Central and Ninehini districts of Ashanti region. The military tax force was able to arrest a few recalcitrant illegal miners. Brigadier General Afo says many of the miners responsible for the extensive devastation of lands and water bodies had vacated the site ahead of the recent operation. Some of the comments even from the Galamseyes that we even have on tape, they tell us that oh, we've come within the next four days, we'll leave, they are coming back. I mean, it is on tape, we've had it on tape. And to the extent that, you know, this operation, as you are aware, when you called me from New York uh, with our deputy, when we shifted it, thinking that the mandate we were going to do it, we, we had the secrecy of it. 7.30 that morning, uh, uh, somebody, uh, one of the guys, so we got the information 7 p.m. Just the, 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 the night before we did the operation. So their communication network is so strong, uh, you, you, you don't imagine how it, how it you goes. Get information? But all the same, this war will be, uh, this uh, war against the environment we want, there's no two ways about it. Uh, we have to sustain it. And that is uh, non negotiable. A visit to Manso Datano. One of the areas for the recent flash out by the military shows a vast area of land destroyed completely by the miners. In the community, many involved in the activity have ceased operations for about two weeks upon information of a military raid. Some of the youth admitted to participating in the illegality. You can't just shut down Galamse. This is how we feed ourselves. We are only benefiting from the pits opened by the Chinese. 
This is our only means of survival. There is no job for the youth in Manso. There is no any factory here. Meanwhile, intelligence of the military has revealed plans of the illegal miners to return to site. Brigadier General Afo says the military is strategizing to raid the place of illegal mining. But the interviews that we've had with citizens and locals within this catchment area tells us that their livelihoods, particularly their water and their farms, have been devastated. So I believe that the war against the environment will be won. And I know with the assurance from the Honorable Minister, we will actually succeed. For Joy News, Nana Ojima Kumasi. Now, the Lands and Natural Resources Ministry has directed small-scale gold mining company Akunta Mining Limited to stop operations in the Tano Nimre Forest. The directive is coming in the wake of a joint news expose titled Destruction for Gold. It will be recalled that the ministry made a declaration that no license has been issued for minerals prospecting in any forest reserve across the country. But love news uncovered an ongoing degradation of the Tano Nimre Forest Reserve at Samraboy in the western region by Akunta Mining. The ministry, as a follow-up to the, that expose, is asking Akunta Mining to halt its operations in the forest. Now, according to the statement they've brought, the attention of the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources has been drawn to publications about certain operations by Akunta Mining Limited in the Tano Nimre Forest Reserve in the Memphis West Municipality in the Western Region. Records available to the ministry shows that while Akunta Mining has a mining lease to undertake mining operations in some part of Samraboy, Outside the Forest Reserve, the company has no mineral right to undertake any mining operations in the Town of Nimre Forest Reserve. Our records show that Akunta Mining Limited on 25th August 2022 applied for a mining lease to undertake mining operations in the said Forest Reserve. By a ministerial directive, all reconnaissance, prospecting and or exploratory activities in forest reserves in the country are suspended, except in exceptional circumstances. Although this directive does not affect mining in forest reserves, a quantum mining limited application has not been determined. Accordingly, any alleged activity being undertaken by the company in the Forest Reserve is illegal. Now, the Honorable Minister for Land and Natural Resources has therefore directed the Forestry Commission to forthwith ensure that the company does not carry out any operation in the forest and to take the necessary action against any person found culpable in this matter. The Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources remains committed to the fight against illegal mining with integrity and transparency and assures the general public that it will continue to work with the re relevant agencies and all stakeholders to come to grips with this age-old Galamse menace. And that's from the Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources. Now, it sounds like the name of a middle-class neighborhood in the capital, but no, it is not. It is one of the many unapproved routes dotted along Ghana's western land border, located right at the banks of the Tano River, Kokovile, which is a poorly lit, forested swath of land, is becoming a hotbed of smuggling, sometimes used to smuggle bags of rice, cooking oil, and more. But the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority says it will be able to fully stop the practice if the number of its personnel is increased and adequately resourced. Maxwell Agbaba visited Kokovile in the dead of the night in a report. It is pitch dark um, with no source of illumination here um, at the Ghana side of the um, Ilubo border across um, the river Tano, which is here, is the Nuwe community. I'm told that this is one of the um, unapproved routes um, to Ghana, that is specifically to Ilubo. I have some officers um, here who are making sure um, that persons, unauthorized persons, do not get access um, to Ghana using this unapproved route. And they're going to be staying here throughout the night, and this is their work. I must admit that it's a very uncomfortable terrain, and I'm wondering how they are able to do it. So I've been speaking to the head of preventive um, at the Customs Division of the Ghana Revenue Authority, Elubo. Um, collection point ARU Fifi Blankson. He has been telling me about the challenges um, manning this unapproved route here um, at Elubo. We, we call this place Cocoville okay. and it's one of the unapproved routes that we have along the border, the stretch of the border. Yeah. Aside the main border, um, people coming through 
this point. And okay. we have our men that are stationed here to ensure mm -hmm. that they, they protect our, our borders okay. from, from smuggling and also from, from, from um, other illegal activities. Okay. Whether being it um, um, people that are not supposed to come in or goods that are not supposed to come in or are supposed mm -hmm. to go out of the country. Yeah. So that is why we have our men here. And okay. as you can see, it is, it is late, but they are still here doing their work. And so, I mean, it's, it's quite challenging, but that is, that is why we are, we, are, we are trained and that is what we are trained for. And mm. so in as much as we have all these challenges, yeah. we, still, we, still, we still do what we have to do as part of these challenges. Mm. And, I, and I see these canoes there. Yeah. Uh, uh, are they for patrols for your personnel? No, these, these are not for our personnel. These are canoes that ferry people across to the other side, that is the Ivorian side. Okay. You know, um, the, the two towns are close to the extent that we have people that live here, that have their farms at the other side, okay. have their families at the other side, have their businesses at the other side, okay. and it's vice versa. Okay. And so what happens is that they, they sit in this boat to go across to the other side. Okay. Of, 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 uh, that is the Cote d'Ivoire side, which is called Noé. What would you say are some of the challenges, you know, managing this unapproved route. <laughs> the challenges, well, if, I, if I'm to say the challenges, they are enormous, but yeah. you, can, you can tell for yourself. Yeah. You can see we don't have, for example, we don't have a structure here where, in case it is raining, our officers will, 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 will take shed. We don't have, there's no lighting system here. Yeah. And so somebody and can be here. Thing across it is till so you get to the, the end. Yeah. That is the nature of this part of the border. Okay. There is no lightning, there's, there's, there's nothing. It is just as dark as you can see. Yeah. And so our officers have to make do with the little lighting that they have. Yeah. You know, and imagine when there's no light, when it's light off. Yeah. The nature of this place, how it looks like. Yeah. And this, this, this part of the honor route is even nice. If we are to go deeper, you would see how terrible some of the terrain are. You'll be going through trees, you'll be going through cocoa farms, how muddy the places and all that. Mm. And our men are there working 24-7. Wow. If you had an opportunity to speak to um, the, the powers that be, what kind of assistance would you go for? <laughs> we need a lot of assistance. You know, um, we live in, we live in, an, in, in a technological age. Yeah. So I believe if we deploy technology, with the work that we are doing, we will be able to achieve a lot of results. Okay. And so, um, for instance, if we have, if we have drone technology, mm. you know, we, would, we can be sitting somewhere and be monitoring the activities or whatever that goes on along the border. Okay. And so, it is easy to deploy men to a particular point to take action than when you have the people just going round. Because by the time you move to a particular point, mm. they might have use a different area. Yeah. And you see this place is vast. Mm. And so once you begin to mount checks at a particular point, they, they, they continue to create other ones. Yeah. And that is, that, is, that, is, that, is, that is a worry. Okay. And so for me, I would say that, yes, we will need to, to, to look at how to deploy technology mm. in, the, in the work that we are doing, especially for patrols. Okay. And then also we will need to also, if it's possible, increase the number of personnel that we have so that we can we can beef up the men that we have at these unapproved routes. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you too. Thank you. So we'll cross over to Araba Kumsi for this week's editorial. Well, last Saturday, Accra was buzzing. Literally, the Global Citizen Festival put Ghana on the map and in the limelight. Not only did the program convince African governments and multinationals to commit to achieving the Sustainable Development Goals, but it was also an avenue to sell Ghana, or Ghanaian and African music, to the world. It was excellently executed. The feedback from patrons has been amazing. All in all, this was an exceptional experience, and it opened up Ghana to the world. Awesome, isn't it? Except that, instead of the expected conversations around the concert itself, and how Ghana can benefit from that exposure, the discussions that have dominated societal chatter is the booing of President Ekofuado by the concert goers. On the surface, it appears quite irrelevant. But actually, is it? Let's dig into it.
So that's the president being jeered by the concert goers. It was very clear he was booed, which will not be the first time any president has been jeered. But his appointees argue that he was rather cheered on. And even some say it was unfair. Until I left there and came home the following day, I didn't know he was booed. You mean you, mean you didn't hear from where you sat that people were shouting away, away, back, no. back, back, back? The first notion was that, could it be that it happened that I did not hear? Because the crowd was too huge. So it could have happened on one side that you on the other side you were here. And then I watched the video. The president mounted the platform and all he said, I think he said in key, that the whole of the world or the whole of uh, it's here. And then people start shouting at him. I think it is unfair. We must be ashamed of ourselves. I don't think it is a proper development in our country. Perhaps he may have been cheered on, granted, but it was very clear he was booed by a section of the crowd. Of course, it's embarrassing for the president. It's not a good look. Some have even suggested that sections of the media are to blame for making this administration unpopular, which may have elicited that reaction from the crowd. How anyone can come to that conclusion beats my imagination. Things are not looking up in Ghana. Our currency has depreciated so badly this year and ordinary people are feeling the pinch. Fuel prices are up, inflation is up, food prices and other goods are becoming increasingly, increasingly affordable, unaffordable to many. And with all this, you don't need the media to make you unpopular. You are doing that very well on your own. So the reaction of these concert goers, majority of whom were young people, to the president was in fact a firm feedback to government. The message is simple. The people are not happy with the current state of affairs, and that is how they chose to show it. Can you blame them? I mean, day in, day out, our news gathering activities, we've been given feedback to the government. Has government been listening? Joy News Living Standard Series has been providing government free feedback about how Ghanaians are coping in these hard times. Dian Anado, Joy News Tracker, all of them, they've been giving government free feedback on unfulfilled promises. And Joy News Editorial has been given this government free feedback, period. So the youth booing and jeering at the president may be symptomatic of a bigger problem, which is why they may have reacted in the manner that they did. So, Mr. President, that was in actual fact Feedback. So rather than apportioning blame, please take the criticism in good faith. Former UK Prime Minister Winston Churchill once said, and I quote, Criticism may not be agreeable, but it is necessary. It fulfills the same function as pain in the human body. It calls attention to an unhealthy state of things. There you have it, Mr. President. You have your feedback. What you do with it is entirely up to you. Welcome back from the break. Now, some mobile phone subscribers are calling for the extension of the SIM card registration exercise again as a deadline, yes. While many struggle to get hold of their Ghana cards, many others are frustrated over the slow SIM registration process. They are calling on government to give them some more time to register their cards. Earlier, Michael Ashley visited some of the registration centers and our reports. Um, it's deadline day for the SIM card re-registration exercise. Uh, we are currently at Elwak, where most people are here in a rush to get the primary document, I'd say the only document you need to go through the SIM card registration exercise, the Ghana card. Most of them are here uh, hoping to get their Ghana card for the very first time. For some of them, they've gone through the process um, after they've misplaced it, and they are hoping to get the Ghana card. Else, they miss... A man here, she's 
going to share with us his ordeal. So, Daddy. The card I was using was for my mother, so I had to buy a new one. I've been here for almost an hour to register the new one. The father no saw me in the age, man. So now, now, yeah. So we got to proud down to be him, man. So we see, I'm not my to say. We try to one hour, no more. Yeah, my full car, I could, I could, I could go up a part. That's good. But so when to be end the deadline, when to marry the start, then I'll be. And the second day, I'm going to say, my man. My man, I promise that we will grow. I bet now, sir. I'm going to buy a Megana card. I came here around 7 a.m. They took my Ghana card. I came here around 7 a.m. They took my Ghana card and I've since not returned it. I want to even go to work. I'll buy a new SIM card if I am unable to register. I came here before 5.30 a.m. I've been here since morning, but they say the service has jumped. I'll buy a new card if I am unable to register. I have already registered, but they told me the card wasn't linked to my SIM card. That is why I am here. So most of these telecommunication subscribers are hoping that the network will be restored so they have their SIM cards registered before today ends. From here at Susanso, my name is Emmanuel bright -Squick. So that was Love FM's Emmanuel bright with a report from Kumasi. We can now take the report from Accra. This, today is my fifth time now I was here. Today, today my life day I came. I don't know what is going to happen to me today. So today, if we did it, I didn't get it today. I, I, I think I, I, they will send me to 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 military barrack. What did they tell you? As you go in camp, as you go in two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, two weeks, fifth time today. So two weeks, five. That will be ten weeks. Yes. Ask them. When you go to ask the reason why this, this they'll tell you I don't know, you are to know. But today is my last day of my coming here. So you haven't registered your SIM card. No, 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 no. What, I, can, I can't register it. Because the, what, 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 what I'll get before I register it is here. I can't get it, so I didn't register it. I didn't get your name. Yeah, Sobojo. Sobojo, Sobojo. Yeah, yeah. Alice. My name is Reverend Joshua. Reverend, uh, why, why are you here? I'm here for the card. I've, I've done it um, last three months, and I've been here several times. But any time I come, they postpone it that the card is not ready yet. And today also, I'm here. So it's a whole lot. You pick up, you come here, they say it's not ready, you come and spend your whole day here without doing anything. And you know, Ghana here, when you miss a work just a day, they will deduct you from your salary. Now the Ghana Water Company is assuring consumers that it is safe to drink the water directly from taps without doubt about its safety and quality. According to the company, even though Galamse activities are affecting its operations, the effect is more of cost and not the quality of water produced from consume, for the consuming public. Speaking at a PRC stakeholder forum in Cape Coast, Communications Manager of Ghana Water, Stanley Marte, also revealed how dogs are being used on a daily basis to chase their meter readers from some homes. A small in his report. 
The consuming public have more often than not expressed doubts about the quality of water produced by the Ghana Water Company through their taps. While many have resorted to using the water for only household chores because they are unsure about the quality of the water served, others say the water produced by Ghana Water Company is simply not good enough for drinking. But speaking at the consumer clinic organized by the PURC in Cape Coast, communications manager of the company, Stanley Marty, gave this assurance. We have noticed per the rounds that we are doing is the complaints on, um, on water quality. And it's emanating from the fact that people think that uh, because Galamse is destroying our water bodies, it's affecting the water that flows into our homes. We want to assure the general public that Galamse is affecting our water bodies uh, and affecting GWCL in terms of cost of production. But we are able, when we are able to treat the water and we pump into the system, the water that comes out of the treatment plant meets the best of standards. There are two standards that we use in treating water. The World Health Organization drinking water standards and then the Ghana Standards Authority's drinking water standards. And Ghana Water Company Limited, we do all we can to treat our water to even exceed the standards for Ghana Standards Authority, which is higher than the WHO. So we want to assure the general public that water that flows into our taps meets the best of standard and they can consume it directly from the tap. Okay, we are complaining because it is the cost that is high. Our 25 junior high schools in the Ashanti region have been initiated into the Ghana Science and Technology Explorer Prize Challenge. The challenge, organized by the Dream Overall Foundation, aims at igniting students at a basic level to proffer solutions to societal problems by employing practical skills and knowledge in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics STEM. The initiative complements the government's effort to promote STEM education. There's more in this report. Out of the 800 entries received and assessed, only 50 basic schools in both Greater Accra and Ashanti regions made the final cut for the competition. 25 teams in groups of four to six from various basic schools in the Ashanti region will battle the remaining schools in the Greater Accra region for the ultimate prize. The maiden edition is focused on improving the quality of education, opportunity creation and providing solutions for local community problems. Efwa here is a brands and communication lead for Dream Oval Foundation. We believe that they are young, their minds are ripe, and it's a great stage to be able to imbibe or introduce um, new ways of exploring or educating them. Now we know that STEM is a key area um, in growth, and even in Ghana we've seen that um, STEM has become a key area, a key focus area. And we want to be able to create opportunities, not just for people who have it, but people who don't. In a bid to commercialize the developed product, the finalists will be equipped with entrepreneurial, business ideation and business plan development skills. Participants will be coached by mentors in STEM to expand their knowledge base and be guided in developing their ideas into prototypes. Elikip Ananuwaku is Programs Manager, Founder Vine. We are expecting the students to be able to um, come up with um, very groundbreaking ideas, even if it's just things they want to solve in their community.